Hey everyone, James with TFB TV, SHOT Show 2020. We're on the SHOT Show floor at the IWI booth with my good friend, Jeremy. What's up, buddy? Always good to see you, always good to drop by IWI. We've got something that I actually did an article about on TFB. Uh, we found out about this, you know, I heard it was coming down the pipeline and I was really excited. The, the interesting part about that is that we didn't know that the manual went online until you sent me the text and I was like, oh, <laughs> about that. And, and look, you can never be too safe. It's nice to have the manual circulating. I mean, you, might as well, you right? Even announce the product. Yeah. So we found out about it a, a few days early. Yeah. But it's good to actually see it in person. Um, and I'm going to preface this piece because just like I did with my article, you have people who say, oh man, you know, it's going to be another AR-15. Yep. But it's so much more than that, the potential of it. I mean, this is a nice AR-15. That's true. However, what I'm excited about is you know, what, what it brings. This, yeah, what it brings. So let's yeah. talk about the AR first, then let's talk about the yeah. projects down the pipe. So it's a 16 inch uh, free float rifle, 15 inch handguard, mid length gas system, as you wrote up on your, on your uh, article, Teflon coated internal upper and buffer tube. And the rest is all mil spec, as close as we could get it. Um, everything's being built in house except for the small components and stuff like that. So upper, lower, barrel, rail, uh, things of that nature, which is important because that's what the big picture with this whole concept is and that's the startup of IWI US manufacturing. Right and that's the thing is you guys invested like eight figures in manufacturing equipment and this is going to be the first gun that you guys are making stateside. Yeah so we invested in a building, machinery, things in general that are well outside the scope of a, just a simple importer and uh, we're just we're being proactive instead of reactive. We right. know at some point there very well could be a importation ban on firearms Absolutely. and with the what we've what we're known for with the x95 and the SAR and all the other weapon system there's over 200,000 IWI weapon systems in the commercial US market should they ban importations we no longer can service those customers well that does a disservice to our customer base right so standing up US manufacturing is arguably an insurance policy you're gonna that, be able to make parts you're gonna be able to make accessories you're gonna yep. be able to warranty service absolutely it, it, like otherwise you wouldn't be able to if it yeah. had been absolutely had but what we didn't want to get into was the the 2000 air Glock was my pistol made in Austria or was it made in the US where so all legacy product is still going to be made in Israel. We have no plans on taking that from Israel unless we're forced to, but we still need those machines up and running. So the M4 variant Zion came to live. And while we're producing that, we're learning how to make the X95, Galil, Jericho, and everything else. Do you have any comment? I imagine the answer is no. Are we going to see the stuff that you guys can't import, like, say, the Masada Compact, I believe you can't, the Carmel? Is there any potential that we're going to see that now that you guys can manufacture those components to make it 922 compliant over here? I'll never say truly never if it can be legally uh, owned by the civilian marketplace. So like a, people have asked me like a semi-automatic close fired from the closed bolt in the Gev, not going to happen. But Carmel, Arad, we're, we'll continue to work, try to work with the ATF importation, uh -huh. but don't take it off the table that if that doesn't go the way we need it to go, that we don't bring it in-house and bring it to the U.S. I mean, and that's truly the keynote for this video, but to turn back to the AR-15, let's work through the back to the front. We've got B5 furniture, right? B5 furniture. Mil-spec or commercial buffer? Mil-spec. You said a lot of the small components you don't make. Yep, you're, so yeah. pins and triggers, springs, things of that nature, we're sourcing. But the actual receiver itself, upper and lower, that's coming in as a forging. We're making it, we're machining it the rest of the way. Rail, at sy rail system itself and the barrel. Okay, you guys are making that. So M-Lock, obviously. Yep. Then you've got, uh, tell me about the bolt carrier group. What full auto, full weight. Hey, it happens. It happens. Amir, it's okay. thank you. <laughs> it's all right, no big deal. Um, okay, so yeah, so it's a full auto bolt Full carrier. weight, yep. Um, and then you have uh, the barrel. What do we have? 4140, 4150? 4150, uh, chrome molly uh, uh, one and eight. One and eight. One and eight. See, I like that. And a lot of people, I, I feel like one and eight, it is the, the ignored. Yep. It's like the middle child yep. between one and seven, one and nine. And in, in my opinion, it's the best twist rate. So I agree. I'm glad to hear that some thought went into this because what you could have done is just a regular carbine gas system. Absolutely. With like an M4 profile barrel, but you guys, and, and 
like one in seven or one in nine, but you didn't do that. Like, yep. So it's a SOCOM profile, um, a little bit, so a little bit heavier, can hold heat a little bit better. Um, and then we're doing some other little things. Like I said, it's a Teflon coated upper receiver and a buffer tube, melanite gas tube itself. Mm -hmm. Staking it, we 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 knew that we couldn't just jump in the ring and think we box. So we took what we knew from the people within the U.S and said, these are the areas in which the U.S. marketplace is going to scrutinize the weapon system. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure we're solid there. Yeah, so and, and it looks like you guys did a great job here. I mean, this, we, the balance is great. Clearly, you put some thought into this. Yeah. Um, irons, do they come with? Nope, no irons. We left that. We, we, I wanted to leave everything that was like garage gunsmith to the, to the user. Sure. So backup irons, charging handle, flash hider, trigger. So look, I mean, just a little tip since you guys are getting into the air business now, you don't say it doesn't come with irons, you say it's optics ready. That's how that little tip from the pros there. Uh, I'll Two take most it. important questions, SHOT Show. Price, availability. $8.99 retail, you'll find it cheaper than that obviously. Uh, we'll be shipping into February. Perfect. Jeremy, thank you as usual. Thanks buddy. Guys, you stay tuned, we're going to bring you more from the SHOT Show for SHOT Show 2020.